Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to uh, create this uh, trefoil star shape. Um, specifically, uh, this is in response to Unker J in the uh, Shapeways design forum. Um, he was inquiring about how to translate the uh, tutorial I had done of, of this shape in uh, 3ds Max to Blender. Okay, so here's the object uh, completed in Blender, and it, it could be used also uh, for a 3D print. You know, in the end, it's it's really just a matter of simply scaling some vertices and uh, manually instead of using a uh, modifier for it. So, all right, I'll show you how that is done. Um, let me just delete that, that from the scene and we'll start fresh. Um, just so you know ahead of time, I'm using uh, the dynamic space uh, bar menu uh, add-on and also the uh, Pi menu add-on official. Um, I'm using uh, Blender 2.75, but this uh, tutorial should also work just, just as well in 2.74 and uh, possibly some earlier versions as well. Alright, so I'll start by, uh, we're going to add a cylinder to the scene. Okay, and um, in the parameters I'll change the depth from the default one or 2 to 1 and the uh, number of vertices will bring all the way down to six. All right, um, if you're modeling this to scale, obviously radius will matter. Uh, however, for this, it's just a procedural demonstration, so I will um, I'll, I'll just keep it uh, arbitrary. All right, um, now for the cap fill type, we'll change it from the default end gone to a triangle fan. All right, so from here we can go down into the edit mode and uh, the uh, object selected here will uh, duplicate it and bring the duplicate down a little bit um, so that you have some space in between each object okay and then we'll switch to face mode if you're not already in face mode and uh, we'll begin by selecting well, actually, before we do that, um, let's go ahead and uh, we'll add some edge loops here. Okay, so we'll add an edge loop to the uh, right straight through the uh, the first object, and we'll uh, we could have done this in the, in a previous step uh, before we duplicate it, but uh, I forgot about it, so we'll just do it now. All right, so. Uh, we have one edge loop running through each object here. All right, now we can go to uh, face mode and uh, we'll begin by selecting every other group of faces along the sides of uh, the top object like this. And then on the bottom object, we'll uh, do the same thing except um, along the opposite groups of, of faces. So essentially you'll be uh, selecting the faces like this, okay? And uh, from there we'll go into our top view and we will uh, extrude by, um, by region. All right, and so when you're extruding by region, you'll want to achieve a shape similar to this. Okay, so this is what we're uh, this is what we're after. All right, now with your polygons on the side still selected, we will um, switch our pivot point position to individual origins and uh, tap the S key, and we'll scale. Whoops, we don't want to do that. Uh, let's try that again. We'll scale the faces up a little bit. So we have this uh, flared effect here, okay, and perhaps even even more than that, like so about like that, okay. All right, now from uh, this point, we could go ahead and uh, delete the selected faces, all right, to hollow that out, and then we'll go to a side orthographic view, and we'll switch to our wireframe view. 
and tap the B key and we will select all of the faces in the in the middle of each object here all right so we want to make sure that we get all of the faces from this horizontal edge loop on the top object all the way down to the horizontal edge loop going through the bottom object you want to capture all of those faces on each object just like that and then we will delete those faces and then uh, put your mouse button over the, uh, the bottom object and tap the L key to select the entire object and just move it up along the z-axis until it's just about touching the top object alright so then uh, we can bounce out to our uh, perspective view and go back to our solid shading and this is what we have so far okay so now we can go into vertice mode vertices mode and we will go down to uh, we want to weld these points together okay at their center point so what we'll do is uh, tap the B key and select the two vertices in in this area and then the uh, alt and M key and at center will merge them okay and we're going to do that all the way around the object um, just make sure that you're grabbing only the two vertices that we're intending to weld together and um, weld them at center okay so we'll circle around the object and uh, deselect the previous uh, two vertices and um, and just keep going with your selection around the object merging them we could probably uh, we could probably just do remove doubles here as well um, I'm sure that would work uh, if this is uh, too kind time consuming for you um, I'm doing this because it's uh, giving me a, a definite result here but let's uh, let's just see for the sake of argument if we uh, let's select all the vertices tap the W key and then remove doubles and over here in the uh, remove doubles distance merge distance we'll just go ahead and increase the, the value of that until we see that uh, we've merged those vertices properly and it looks like that worked so that's a that's an easier way to do it than to go around the object selecting every two vertices there all right so you can just remove doubles and just make sure that they are all in fact welded together okay all right so once that's done we're going to have to uh, do this part manually however um, so we'll select the next the the two vertices here on the outside of this fanned area uh, the one vertice on the bottom and the one vertex on the top and uh, we're going to do the procedure that we were going to do previously and merge them at center okay so select this one and this one and then control M at center and then this one and this one and then merge at center and then keep going around And this can go relatively quickly um, because you have a better uh, view of what you're doing than in the previous operation okay so it looks like we have them all now all right so I want to eliminate these faces in in the middle here as well okay because we won't need those either so we'll switch to face mode and just uh, go around the object and uh, select these faces in the middle here and go ahead and delete those faces okay so now we have a single-sided object all the way around and uh, we'll go to orthographic top view um, I'll select one of these triangles then I'll shift G and select polygon sides 
to grab them all and then I'll tap the S key and I will scale all of those uh, faces down somewhat okay so we have something like this now all right I'm going back out to perspective view here and looks like looks like we have everything proper um, I'm going to go into orthographic and the side view and when you look at this from the side view you want something that looks like this basically um, you know an, uh, almost a, a circular type of low polygon object here uh, you can see the hole here in the middle and then this this S type shape here and uh, that's exactly how you want it at this point alright so we're going to go into our wireframe mode and at the vertex level um, we're going to box select all of these top most vert vertexes here these vertices I'm sorry uh, let's see so all of those and then we will select all of these on the bottom okay so you have captured all of these vertices all right around the object and then what what we're going to do is make sure your uh, your pivot is in the is in the center of the object it hasn't moved and we're going to use our uh, 3d cursor as the um, uh, as the, uh, the the rotation point here and we're going to tap S on the keyboard and then shift Z and what that does is it um, it'll allow us to scale these points only along the uh, the X and Y axis and not the Z axis and we're going to scale them rather close to each other like this all right so now this is the uh, let's go back out to the solid view and this is the shape that we've achieved here by doing that okay it's a rather cool looking shape already but you can see how this is progressing all right so we're almost uh, we're almost at the finish line here um, this is the uh, surface we're looking to get so the next step is going to uh, is going to be to uh, just scale it down on the z-axis slightly so we're going to tap the S key actually we'll select everything tap the S key and then the Z key and that'll allow us to scale everything down on the z-axis only alright so now we have this and now we can go out and apply some thickness and some uh, subdivision surfaces to it but the thing is that uh, currently if we were to go out into object mode and then go and apply a solidify modifier at this point you could see something funny happening here um, switch your offset to zero and thicken it a little bit and you could see that there are some uh, strange looking artifacts in here and there's even a uh, crease going right through uh, through the middle and the reason for this I couldn't figure it out at first but the reason for this um, has to do with the uh, way the normals are facing here on the object so let's go back down into our uh, edit mode and in face mode so let make sure everything is selected um, and then hold down control and tap the N key and that will unify the normals of all the faces so that they're all uh, pointing in the same direction and doing that will uh, hopefully let's see here we'll apply some more thickness to it yeah in doing that we will have corrected that issue and as you can see there's no longer a crease in the middle and uh, it looks like a solid shape now 
Okay, so my settings over here, just make sure your offset is at zero. Um, you can use the high quality and you can use even thickness if you want to. All right, um, and then just apply a thickness that you're happy with uh, and then go ahead and apply a subdivision surface modifier. All right, and I would increase it to at least three. Um, you can use three uh, if you're um, using it as a digital asset with smooth shading, and uh, you know it should look fine. Let me go out to uh, perspective view here, um, and the object should look fine that way. You can uh, even play with the crease value of the uh, of the uh, solidify modifier to crease the edges if you don't want to add more geometry um, with support loops. Okay. So this looks a lot more like the shape that we achieved in, or I achieved in 3ds Max. Um, and, uh, you know, it's fairly simple to get in Blender. I, I, what was, uh, you know, catching me uh, as to the problem previous uh, when I had run tests on this was that uh, you needed to unify the uh, face normals in order to uh, get the you know a nice smooth surface here otherwise it was giving all kinds of topological problems so that cleaned it up now if you're going to 3d print this I would suggest uh, increasing subdivisions perhaps one or two more iterations um, because uh, you know smooth shading won't uh, you know get translated to a 3d print so you know four maybe five iterations to get a nice uh, smooth print on this thing all right but uh, so there's the object um, sorry it took so long to get this tutorial out I had done the 3ds max tutorial uh, a couple weeks ago and um, as I said, I, I tried to uh, duplicate the uh, procedures here in Blender, but um, Blender, is, as I've said before, is not my native application uh, for modeling. So I uh, had, you know, had some trouble figuring out um, some of the uh, translations, uh, particularly the squeeze modifier in 3ds Max. There, there wasn't anything in Blender that. Uh, was going to be able to duplicate that so um, we just had to do it by hand which isn't a big deal and um, blender has some fantastic modeling tools it's one of the uh, most efficient uh, polygonal modeling applications there is out there um, so the tools in blender could definitely accomplish uh, uh, what the modifiers it doesn't have for uh, compared to 3ds max uh, it, you could still accomplish it fairly quickly by hand here so all right so this is it um, I'm going to be doing another uh, blender tutorial for the ported cube uh, that I did in 3ds max on my channel so uh, keep an eye out for that one it's a very simple tutorial but um, I had a couple people mention to me that they uh, they had a couple of points to it that they didn't quite uh, know how to translate to Blender, so I'm going to do one for that. Um, and I'll have a couple more Blender tutorials uh, lined up as well. So hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope it was useful and, and provided some insight into uh, uh, translating uh, certain things from 3ds Max to Blender. And um, don't forget to... Uh, you know subscribe to my channel and like the video and uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon